you get that feeling that this town has been forgotten about a little bit. Hello? Sorry. Oh, it's me, Steve. There's a lot of people out there who want to slate Blackpool, yeah, and I won't concur with that. Blackpool's a fantastic place to come. Bit of sunshine, it's better than in Los Angeles, it's better than uh, Venice Beach. About 240 miles northwest of London is Blackpool, a city of 140,000 people. Until the 1980s, Blackpool was the number one tourism destination in the entire United Kingdom. Beginning in the 1800s, the seaside city would draw millions of tourists from nearby industrial hubs like Liverpool, Manchester, and Leeds. By the late 1900s though, everything was starting to change. Industry was leaving, coal mines were shutting down, and budget airlines like Ryanair meant that people were able to fly from the UK to Southern Europe for way cheaper than it was to even drive to places like Blackpool. So fewer and fewer people came, the economy struggled, and Blackpool fell on hard times. Today, Blackpool is England's poorest city. It's home to nine of the UK's most deprived neighborhoods. People who are born here are more than 50% more likely to be in poverty than someone born in London. And the life expectancy of a man born in Blackpool is 13 years lower than that of a man born in central London. We were curious to learn what life was like in the city. So we went to Blackpool and we had some conversations. The first person who showed us around was Stephen Chaitley. Welcome to another video. Walk on the wild side and I am back here in Blackpool a YouTuber who's developed a cult following by documenting life in the city. Steven took us around and we ended up having a fascinating trip. Life expectancy is not particularly great here in Blackpool. There's a lot of fast food. There's a bit of a fast food culture and there's quite a lot of poverty as well, obviously. A lot of derelict buildings because when I said when the jet travel came along and people started going over to Spain and places like that going over to the continent, all that money then went over there, so people weren't staying here, so the hotels and guest houses, they sold up. They were then turned into flats, apartments, sometimes bed sits, which is like what's called, have you heard of a bed sit? No. A bed sitting room, so you'd have a bed and a sitting room in like a little room, and it, that's it, that you'd have that, and you'd probably share a, a shower and a kitchen with somebody else, and that, that's what a lot of the hotels and, and guest houses were turned into. And then you'd get these people moving into these places, which were not kind of, some of them were not, uh, they had problems, you know, problems with alcoholism, drugs, and things like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people moved into these places. Not all of them were that, but some of them were working so and the, were genuine. Was this in the 90s, 80s? When did this start? I would say that, well, I grew up in Blackpool and I was born 1969. Now in the 70s, we it was great you know it's great we lived in blackpool we had everything on our doorstep we didn't have to travel we could just go to the beach we could go to the pleasure beach go on the roller coasters go to the tower uh, people had to travel to do it we never really noticed the decline fun enough but i think once it got into the 80s you know once we started growing up a bit and reached the age of 16 and leave school and all that sort of thing you can see it we could see it then you could definitely see that uh, some areas were not no they were, they were on the way down, you know, hotels were closing and we had these bed sits and, 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 and things like that and it, it, it shops shut in and, and, and that, yeah, so it, we, we noticed it in the 80s, yeah. Now this road here is called Central Drive. Now this is quite an interesting road because it starts off kind of, you know, we've got houses here and we've got a church there and, and these are kind of like average houses, these. But as you go down this road and get to the other end, if you get to the far end, it, it, it kind of goes downhill. It, it, the, it's very different to here. We have a lot of shops at, at the other end and it, there's, it's very run down. And I remember when I was growing up, it used to be, it used to have butchers and fishmongers and, and of course supermarkets came along and, you know, when the supermarkets came along, a lot of the smaller shops uh, shut down, I suppose, didn't they? Because the seed markets were taking over, weren't they? So I think it's not, it's like a lot of other places suffer the same sort of thing. Why That's, is it called Blackpool? It's called Blackpool because on the promenade, there used to be hundreds of years ago, there used to be a dike which runs under here somewhere, <laughs> under, all the way to the, to the beach and that dike had peaty water in it and when it dripped out at the other end on the beach 
it created a black pool. Hmm. So therefore, black pool. It was like two separate words, and then it became one. Huh. Uh, Taco Bell. Yeah, actually, that's new. I, oh, that only opened up um, last year. But we're now coming to the sort of high street, if you want to call it that now. Um, so this is where all the shops are, you know, that we used to... Um, this is, if you look, it doesn't look too bad actually, really, but you do get some people around here. A lot of people, there's flats here, and they're not the best. They're not the best, you know. Mm -hmm. the, some of them aren't really fit for living in some of them. And you, you get a lot of alcoholics and that around here. And, and they move here from elsewhere in England? Sometimes they get shoved here from other councils because they haven't got, they might have, they might get shoved here from another town because that town might not have the the properties that we have, you know, like we have all the the, the flats and the guest houses. We had a lot of uh, places where people could live, whereas other places didn't. So there was a butcher's there, but that's just closed down. There's also a lot of um, Eastern Europeans that have moved in here in the last sort of 20 years, and they've opened up these markets here, and a lot of these are, are run by Eastern Europeans. If you were here 20 years ago, there'll have been none of them but there are there are some 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 good shops along here just in between but you can see that there is there's a lot of shuttered up we also have a lot of turkish barbers you see that's actually quite a nice looking one that one actually mm -hmm. there, there's a there's a lot of suspicion about these turkish barbers they've cropped up all over the place there's about six or seven of them just along here but so people, there's a, people think they're like uh, money, like fronts. Yeah, something. yeah. A lot of people think that. That's that's quite a. That's a new one. That one. They've just they've moved from a smaller unit into that one there. So that's quite it a. Looks nice. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if if you if you carry on this way, if you follow that bus there, mm -hmm. we'll see that this particular bit here looks even worse because we've got a load of shops there that are all. It just looks a mess along here. Really, doesn't it? Look, all the shuttered up shops there, look, and on this side as well. So back in the, if you go back to, um, what, 19, 1950s, this would have been thriving round here. We'd have had the railway line coming in. So the railway line used to come right into here, the main railway line. If you turn left, if you turn left, sorry. Casino? <coughs> yeah, is that, is that, a casino? That, that's an arcade. So it's just like a, an arcade for families, but they also have a casino there. Okay. Yeah, so we're now coming to the promenade now, of course, and it's very, very busy around here. Now, I'm not sure which way to go, whether we go... It might be easier to turn left, actually, along here. But it's a bit difficult to come out here turning right. Okay. We've got some... Uh, so if you turn left here... There are quite a few homeless people as well. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that it's worse than than many other places really but it is quite obvious it is quite obvious the the homeless people so is this is this the main we're actually right in the center where most people tend to be this is where yeah this is the actual sort of this is where most of the people collect anywhere from that pier there up to the, about the tower this is around here so I don't, did, did you want to nip out and, and do a little bit around here yeah yeah that'd be great there was a parking space but it's been taken up now so we might have to try something else I'll tell you. <laughs> what's up man you filming for uh we're filming the town is it yeah full me boy lad get back. we'll come back and interview you straight up snap get back we'll come back We'll interview you. We'll come back. Some of these people are quite scary. <laughs> yeah, so this is like the main drag. It's what they call the Golden Mile. The Golden Mile is not really a mile as such. It's just like, a, it's, it's what I would say from pier to pier. So the South Pier right down there, which you can just about see in front of the roller coaster. You see the South Pier down mm -hmm. there. All the way up to, say, the North Pier. So we've got three piers in Blackpool. And anything in between those piers is what we regard as the Golden Mile. Yeah. So this is the tourism centre. This is pretty much where we are now. It's pretty much the. Uh, the, the business. There's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on <laughs> around here. Yeah, 
lots of interesting people as well. Did you get a good photo then? I did get I did get a good Can we see it? video of that. Can we see We're it? still shooting, we're still shooting. Follow oh, yeah. Follow Roka News on Instagram, we're posting his stuff. Wicked! What's your name? Sam. Okay. This is Ben. What's up, bro? Uh, he's been talking and he didn't take a picture, but oh, he's got it. I got it on camera. What's your channel? It's on... Get it's phone out. We need this. <laughs> it's on uh, Instagram. Our name is Roka News. R-O-C-A News. What's your name, brother? Sam. Sam Cummins. Okay. Are you from Blackpool, yeah? No, we're no. from the U.S. The U.S. Where Tell us you? about Blackpool. What do you? What can you say about Blackpool? Um, it's not the best. It's a bit rough, but we love it. But you're popping the moves out here. Oh, yeah. We're loving it. Well, we're out all day in the sun, in the in the rain, loving it. <laughs> what are you doing in the US? We have a news company. Yeah. Yeah. What What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, your story on in Blackpool? We want to We want to learn more about the towns that used to be industrial hubs and now they're kind of struggling. Yeah. Well, now, they, yeah, they are struggling. They They don't They don't know really what they're doing. They've just put open that new landfill. Uh, have you seen it? No. The new landfill, it stinks. We've got a petition out for it because it, it fucking reeks. <laughs> can you swear on your channel or not? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, I know. There, there's a petition out for it to close it, but they've only just opened it and it stinks. You can smell it everywhere. It smells like sulfur. So they, they need to close it. If you could say something to the government, what would it be? Oh. Get your ass into gear. Yeah. Say, say that again? Get your ass into gear. Get your ass in the gear. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not trying. They're, they're just, I don't know, sitting sitting down and getting paid, aren't they? <laughs> All right, shall we All right, on? gentlemen. Yeah, love that. Right, hey, take care. It's cheers. been a great day. Have a wonderful day. You too. <laughs> All right, Stephen, what do you think of the heck? I don't know what it's like in the US. You probably have places in the US where you have a, a strip, maybe Las Vegas strip or something like that, where yeah. you get everybody with the with the fancy cars and yeah. the motorbikes, and and this is it. This is where this is like our strip, I suppose. Yeah, and we've also got as well. We're right here by all these um, souvenir shops as well. We can find all kinds of um, souvenirs of Blackpool, and we've got the Blackpool Rock there. That's yeah. very, very famous rock. Uh, it's only made here. And they don't make it anywhere else, Blackpool Rock. So you've got to take yourself some that will a stick get some of, of Blackpool Rock. It's like sugar? Before you, like it sugar is stick? just sugar, yeah. You wouldn't want to eat too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, see, a lot of the stuff that they sell at these places is not really that good for you if you keep eating it all the time. So, you know, you've got A to, little, little yeah. bit goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. We also have the fish and chips as well. Fish and chips. There's lots of fish and chips uh, in black. There are loads of places for fish and chips. Oh, that's the trap. We've also got a bingo here. They, they like the bingo. They like to play the bingo. Pretends anybody will get started now. Line off four corners is always to win. That's any line, even diagonal. All your four corners and a big shout bingo. We come when you get it. So it sends it now. Line goes nine. First number is on the white. Got more there. rock there. There's plenty of rock. <coughs> they do actually sell rock in other places, in other resorts around the UK, but it's all made here. Really? All of it. They don't make rock. They don't make rock anywhere else. More rock there, look, everywhere you look, rock. The people bitter toward the government here and the economic policies that sort of... Yeah, I think quite a few people are, yeah. Yeah, you do get that. You do get that feeling that, that this town has been forgotten about a little bit, that a lot of the money that gets spent in this country goes to down to London and and other cities and Blackpool's kind of been left behind we haven't been given a whole lot of money to you know to regenerate you know and that's it suffered quite a lot in the last you know I mean since the 70s 
it's really really suffered yeah and that's why Blackpool always seems to do really badly in these polls of the you know of the degeneration the the, the poverty the alcoholism the life expectancy is really low here teenage pregnancies is is high every all those sort of things all come together because of the the situation because of there's so much poverty around and that's uh, been happening like i say since uh, since the 70s it here is very pro brexit right a lot of people here yeah. like brexit yeah for yeah. those kind of reasons i would say so yeah there, I, i'm quite optimistic myself i am quite optimistic that uh, we'll never be like we were back in the sort of heyday but you can't go back can you sometimes you just can't go back but you have to try to just you have to just um, uh, what do you call it um, you have to evolve don't you I suppose and there are things going on in Blackpool we're building new hotels new hotels going up there's a conference center we've still got we've still got quite a lot of the 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 old buildings that we used to have I and mean, we've still got the tower the tower could have been dismantled it could have been dismantled during the war you're talking about this tower <laughs> yeah the Blackpool Tower <laughs> So 1894 is when it opened, and it must have cost a lot of money. They had to raise a lot of money to build it, but it could have been melted down during the war. Other towers were built and they were melted down. They were just they were just demolished. So we're still so lucky to still have that. We've also got the Winter Gardens complex, which was built during the tail end of the the 19th century. The Winter Gardens. We we have got a lot of history here in Blackpool. The piers, the three, to have all the three piers still here the first pier to be built was the north pier that was built in 1863 that one over there in the distance there so that was built in 1863 this one here was built five years later the central pier those are the years when the industrial revolution was just getting going and yeah. really in manchester right manchester. the port in liverpool yeah yeah so people as soon as they started having some money Oh, yeah, vacation, yeah. They started coming here. That's where all the money came from. It came from people, the workers, mostly came from the workers. It actually started off, Blackpool started off kind of like a, as like a middle class resort in, in sort of the early part of the 19th century. But then when the workers started getting money from the factories and the mills in Manchester and some of the eastern the towns in, in towards the east, like um, Bolton, Blackburn, Burnley, even even in Yorkshire, in the other the other county, Yorkshire, Halifax, places like that, well, that money came here, and it was that money that that uh, helped to uh, uh, build Blackpool. Really. And then, <coughs> on the opposite side, in the last 30, 40 years, not only do you have cheap flights to Spain and Portugal and wherever, but you also have a lot of the factories shutting down, the coal mines shutting down, <coughs> yeah, yeah, and fewer working class jobs, you That's know, good it, yeah, working yeah, class yeah, jobs yeah. available to bring. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a yeah, two, it, two yeah, sides yeah. to it. It was, yeah, yeah. So all that concrete structure there used to be the magistrates' courts and the police station. The police station's that building at the back with the big aerial on the top. Mm -hmm. So that was in use until about 2018. And then the police moved to a new headquarters just on the edge of town, which is all state of the art. Um, that was designed in the 60s, so it's got that brutalist look to mm -hmm. it. And all that is supposed to be coming down. They're going to level the whole lot. They've got a, a private investment of 300 million to build an all new entertainment complex there. Right here. Right 300 here. 300 yeah. million pounds. 300 million, yeah. Wow. Yeah, all so there is, there is money coming in. There is, yeah, yeah. There's lots of, uh, lots of takeaway places where you can get burgers and kebabs and all that sort that, that's not great for you if you're eating them every day <laughs> but some of the people who live around here that's what they're eating every day yeah so you know it's not it's not particularly a good diet really so I, d I don't know if you know there's a guy down here that sells burgers for one pound and I wonder if he's around you might want to speak to him because he's, he's that, uh, could, that could be great he's an interesting character yeah, yeah. he sells burgers for one pound I wonder if he's there there's a lot of tattoo oh. places, tattoo parlours as well. Yeah. I'll just go and I'll just go and sit, give him a shout and see if he's there. Uh, see if he. I 
I say this here. Oh, Open seven days a week. Chris? Hello? Oh, oh, it's me, Steve. Steve. Stephen. I've got someone, I've got someone filming me for something. They're from America. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're from New York. <laughs> Thank you. We're on a tour of Northern England. Okay. Learning about the places that were once thriving and now are less so. Okay, but if we, I'll be honest, yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do a negative spin on no, it, no, it's yeah, not negative. Take it away. No, it's not, yeah. it's not, we're okay. not, no, no. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't concur with what you're saying. Well, that's exactly, that's, that's why we're talking negative. to people. Blackpool has still got the highest turnover tourists in the whole of the UK, yeah, absolutely. If you come back next week, the place will be absolutely heaving, yeah. Wh where are they coming from? Scotland, oh. England, world? All, all, over, all over the world. Well, hence, you're here from, uh, from yeah. America. You've heard about us. We still got the name and we can still kick off like the rest of them yeah. to put it as Americanism there. How, how long has your store been here? I've been here 17 years. Wow. And I've made a good living out of it for 17 years, yeah. There's a lot of people out there who want to slate Blackpool, yeah, and I won't concur with that. Blackpool's a fantastic place to come. Bit of sunshine, it's better than in Los Angeles, it's better than uh, Venice Beach. And I've been all over there, yeah. Yeah. So it's part of What's better. your favorite part about Blackpool? Blackpool. The, the northern humor. In America, in America, you don't really have a sense of humor. Nor do the southerners in England, yeah, but northerners have a sense of humor. We actually talk to each other as well and communicate with each other. Where in America, it's too rush, rush, rush. And down south, it's too rush, rush, rush. But up north, we have conversations with each other. We're friendly. Steve, uh, another YouTuber, I'm a YouTuber. We get up with each other. You're a YouTuber too. I'm a YouTuber. What kind of, yeah. kind of videos you make? Oh yeah? Just fun, just fun stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Just stuff, you know. This is the only town, it's just turned out, you can come here, you can have a burger and get a tattoo of a burger. <laughs> get a burger <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> the the guy will tattoo you with a burger. Yeah. You, you, don't, you don't do that, do you? I don't know, the tattoo is not to do that. I'm going to get you, that's he the tattoo, I tell. He tattoos like a burger, yeah? Well, the thing is, you're coming here to have a bit of fun. Blackpool's all about a bit of escapism. Most of the time, people live their mundane lives, and it's quite boring, so they come here. It's the Vegas of England. It's the what of England? The Vegas of England. Right here. What's up with this sign over here? You say, it's not Burger King, you don't get it your way, you take it my way. Correct, that's Northern humor. <laughs> humor. I know this. I know this is very difficult to relate to the Americans. <laughs> don't have a sense of humour like the Southerners. But Steve, you get it, don't you? I do. Yeah. Because we're Northerners and we understand that type of humour. Right. Well, that's it. You see, what you said about Blackpool is right. Because anything goes here in Blackpool because they have absolutely everything and there is no, there's no stuck upness about it. Correct. Yeah. You can talk to anybody here. How do you make your burgers? What toppings? What's the way? What's is there? What's the burger that you do? It's a beef burger. Beef burger. You slap it on the grill. You cook it. You stick it. You stick it. You dot it. You stick sauce on it. You put it in the bar. What kind of sauce? Red, brown, ketchup, mayo. You know, sauce. <laughs> we, we don't complicate things on the Americans. It's a pound. It's a pound burger. <laughs> So you guys don't complicate everything, you know what I mean? Hey, got, you've like, got an Alabama license plate on the ceiling. I've got a license plate everywhere. <laughs> so Alabama's not special? If you come inside, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. I love America. I go on vacation to America every year. Where yeah? do you go? I've got, I've got, my plan is to do every state. I've got 25 states so far. That's incredible. Yeah, I've got four states and most Americans do. So in January, I'll go away. So if you have a quick look around, well, if you want, if you want a dollar, you can win a dollar. Dang. And these He's are, bad luck. He, no, you'll no, take all his money. These are dollars that was in my pocket in January. What I did is a YouTube video of me being in America on holiday, yeah. <laughs> and I took, I got all these dollars changed, and I brought them back, and I put them in the push so people can win. win. Authentic American dollars. Wow. And you got a few Trumps in there. Donald, Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump's coming back and he's going to get the world back on par now, isn't he? I, I, know, what, I know what you liberal media people are like. You're the wise, <laughs> and, yeah. But us English people, we want Trump back in power. <laughs> and bring, uh, bring uh, Boris Johnson back as well. And we'll be oh, yeah. happy. Absolutely. What's going to happen now? I mean, the Tories are, are done now. Right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. 
three. Yeah, but look at it from a political point of view. Yeah, they've just done fourteen years. Yeah. Nobody does fourteen That's years crazy. any more than that. I'm not going. So. Because you've got to remember there's a lot of people who are now a voting age have never seen a Labour government. Yeah. What will happen, if you if you watch the historical pattern, yeah, Labour will do two terms, completely mess up the economy, and then the Conservative Act will come and fix it again. That's a bit of political Why do you like Trump? Right, because it's great, because it, to start with, yeah, the country's screwed, the whole world's screwed, yeah, but at least you have a laugh with Trump, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Joe Biden, you know, the guy's practically dead, who's, who's there pulling his strings? You know, he's not actually doing anything himself. Yeah. It's only Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton who keeping him awake. <laughs> and that's what we're thinking in this country, yeah, the guy's practically dead. At least Donald Trump <laughs> says what he thinks. And he doesn't care. And when you're a multi-millionaire in your mid-70s banging a fit bird, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The Trump, he's right in there. He knows where to find the money. He's even sleeping on a absolutely, bill Absolutely, yes. He absolutely. knows where to find the money. We love Trump in this country. <laughs> See, this, this is it. You Americans take things far too seriously. Guys, if you're in America, yeah, you don't want to live there. Come over here. It's a lot more fun, isn't it, Steve? Oh, yeah. We have a lot more fun. <laughs> we have a lot more fun here. Yeah. You can't take life seriously. You ain't going to get out of it alive. You might have a laugh on the way. <laughs> Well, we uh, we appreciate you showing us around. No problem. What's your YouTube channel? You gotta plug plug the YouTube. It's Chris Higgett, YouTube Virgin. <laughs> YouTube Virgin. YouTube Virgin. Yeah, I'm the original Blackpool Virgin. I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Blackpool YouTube Virgin. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, All right. Going alone. I didn't think the daddy would be a virgin. Oh, absolutely. I'm the, I'm the YouTube virgin compared to him because he's the messiah. I might be the daddy, but he's the messiah. <laughs> YouTube, okay. I'm glad we got that settled. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is this is an awesome place. So, so the, cool. a takeaway. Blackpool, if you're coming in with the negative energy, take that, send it somewhere Don't else. Don't come here. Don't come here. If you, if you want to come and have a bit of fun, yeah, come here. If you want to come and slag the place off, why come here? Yeah, yeah. right. You get these people going, oh my God, I've come to Blackpool and I'm filming this, I'm filming this rubbish. Why come here to start with? Go and be bored in Devon or Cornwall, or you could always go to Los Angeles if you were to be really bored. <laughs> you know, somewhere like that. Or San Francisco. What? Oh, that's an horrible place. But I'm, oh, yeah. but I'm not going to slag it off because I've been there. Right. Yeah. It's an interesting place. Yeah. Interesting is a different word. It's a mess. I mean, it's a mess. Oh, it's absolutely. Mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but that, again, whose fault was that? Labors. No, no, no. <laughs> Democrats. You, you decriminalise drug use and you decriminalise uh, defecating on the streets. What are you going to get? Yeah. You're going to get that a lot. If you decriminalise everything, all your homeless people are going to end up in one town where they can't be arrested. They can do whatever they want. What do you expect? Yeah. That was Nancy Pelosi. And she was only Joe Biden's whipping bitch anyway. Let's be honest about it. All right, wait, well, I've got one more question, which is we talked to a gentleman earlier who's homeless here. His name's Ruben, and he was sharing his story, and he said he got kicked out of a hotel and they put in oh. migrants. Oh. Um, let, 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 let's be fundamentally honest about this, right? Yeah, a lot of the homeless people are homeless because they have drug addiction and alcohol addiction. I bet you he had a can in his hand or a needle in his arm at the time, yeah? He was definitely an alcoholic or a drug addict, fact, yeah? yeah. He, now, said, he said it. Now, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. reason. Now, what happens is the council, I've seen it, it's like a rotating door, the council, somebody turns up from some shitty little town, yeah? And where are they going to die? They're going to come to the seaside to die. They've already messed up their life in some other town, yeah? So they want to come to somewhere like Blackpool, Scarborough, any other seaside town, the Magnet Boys, yeah? yeah. And and then they'll go to the council, I need a house, I need a house, right. So the council give them a flat. They go into the flat, yeah, and then there's antisocial behaviour. They don't pay the top up. They kick off. All the neighbours start complaining. So they get evicted, yeah? So they're homeless. So whose fault is that? Whose fault? Let, I'm asking you. They're, I mean, their own. Correct. Correct. As a liberal media guy, yeah, <laughs> you admit that, yeah? It's a own fault because they're the ones who can't live by social rules. Within social society, we have a set of guidelines. Yeah. We have the rule of law and then we all have social rules, don't we, yeah? So if you want to live to your next door neighbour, you have common courtesy, don't you? When you've got some smackhead or some uh, alcoholic living next door to you and he's got all his smack that mate coming down at 3 o'clock in the morning, chucking stolen in the window and having parties, he's going to get kicked out, isn't he? Yeah, so if he can't live to convention of society, yeah, it's his own fault he's homeless. It's not the council's fault, it's not the government's fault. It's his own fault. Question is, why did he start it? You see somebody who's on drugs out there. We all know the concept. This is a, a testament, yeah? If you're going to take drugs, don't, yeah? It's stupid, yeah? Because there's only one place you're going to end up. 
and that's in a slab, dead. Yeah, because you start off with a little bit of blow and then it progressively gets worse. And all them smack rats on the street started somewhere and they made that choice. That's my political speech finished with. But you did ask. So therefore, yeah. I don't have a lot of sympathy because as a society, I believe that we have a fundamentally moral obligation to look after the most vulnerable of society. Absolutely, yeah, but not if it's self-induced. Yeah, we all pay taxes. Steve pays taxes. I pay taxes. I even have to pay taxes to America now. I've got YouTube. <laughs> so we, we have to pay taxes to Joe yeah. Biden. I have to pay taxes to Joe Biden to keep him in the White House. Yeah, so we're paying taxes for these people yeah. to abuse themselves. Why? Yeah, it's like I was saying before. I was saying before that Blackpool is particularly a big magnet for these people with the problems, with the drug problems. They all get set, they either come here themselves because they have this dream of, oh, the bright lights, you know, of Blackpool, or sometimes the councils in another town will send them here mm. because they haven't got enough room, or they're just trying to move the problem on. And then the problem moves to us. And that we've suffered with this. But th this, isn't you, this isn't unique to Blackpool. This is yeah. historically Brighton, Jaywick, uh, Rail, you name all the seaside coastal, resorts, yeah. coastal resorts. This is systemic of that. Steve's absolutely right what he said, yeah. If you've got a problematic family in Manchester, yeah, and they're creating problems all the time, it's a 73, it's a 70 to 3% ratio. 70% of all the resources are used by 3% of society. Did you know that? No. That's a fact, all over the world. So, so police, ambulance, fire brigade, every, so 70% of the resources is used by the 3%. So what's a counter good one to do, they want to get rid of us 3%, don't they? So they always try, oh, you'd be far better going to the seaside. Here's the trade there, go to the seaside. And that happens. You see the homeless people here. None of the homeless people here are Sangonians. They're not. They're all exported from other towns. Hmm. In a normal town, you've got a 3% transient population. In Blackpool, you've got a 25% transient wow, population. Wow, that's Fact. a big number. Yeah. Now that's no different to any other seaside town. So the local alcoholic person living on the street here today, be all right, he'll be dead by next year, and he'll be, be, be a backfill by somebody that, else. That's what you see. That's that, how... Absolutely. That, that, it sounds harsh, but it's true. They die they, from, they, they, from alcohol, heroin. Ah, we're stabbing each other over a five pound fix, something like that. That's the fact of life. Well, so, so the homeless man we spoke to earlier, he was showing us his stab wounds. Oh, he was saying, I mean, about, it, it's, it's what, it's what yeah, you're saying. He'll be dead by next year. I've no idea who he is, but he'll be dead by next year. That's just a fact of life. It sounds harsh, but and, and the problem hasn't started here. It started in some town, Manchester, Liverpool, anywhere, Glasgow, anywhere, yeah? Mm -hmm. They'll be up there. Eventually, they were there, they've alienated the some of their families, they'll have been on drugs, they'll have robbed their families, so they end up having to get out of town. So as Steve quite rightly said, they'll remember, oh, Blackpool's a fantastic place. It is a fantastic place if you've got money and you're coming here to a holiday, because that's what we're here, we're a holiday resort. Yeah. Yeah. But don't get these home homeless problems happening everywhere, but it's not started here. It started at other towns. So I have a very little sympathy for homeless people because mm. it is brought among themselves. And the council, to be fair, give them a lot of help, far too much help. And it's a rotated door. That same person will be in a house, kicked out, in a house, kicked out, in a house, kicked out, and then he'll die in a toilet. There you go. That's their progression of life. They'll be dead before they're 50. I'm not stereotyping it quite a lot, yeah. But am I wrong, Steve? No, no, definitely not. Um, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to let people slag Blackpool off and say it's about town no. deadbeats, yeah, no, because there's only a small minority. I could get a camera now and I could go to any town in the country and make it look like a crap hole. You see these YouTubers that go out to the local pub, they'll find a local alcoholic, what do you think of this town? Oh, this town, buggy yeah, hole, yeah, I hate this town. <laughs> Anyone could do that. Anyone could do that. I don't mind the true representation of a town, yeah, but I don't like a negative slant. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth, like Steve will tell you well, the truth, that, yeah? That, that's what but I, I will not give you a negative slant to the place. Well, that's why I got in touch with Steve when we came here. You know, because we've seen videos on YouTube where they come and they do exactly oh, what you're saying. Yeah. And like, I, you know, I, 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 I won't, when people turn up, I won't deal with that. Yeah. And so the moment you come in, as soon as you say, oh, I'm putting straight plane. Yeah. I'm not going to slag the town off. I love the town. I moved here 20 years ago. Where are you from originally? Midlands, near Birmingham. Okay. Telford, you won't have heard of it. Uh, I've been to the Midlands, but now. You, 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 yeah. you're, you're from America, you don't understand geographically anything. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's northern humour. See, Steve gets that. <laughs>
But anything else, guys? So here, here's a question, though. So everyone here, or not everyone, well, a lot of people here voted to leave the EU. Yes. Then you have a Tory government, and yes. more and more and more immigration. Immigration goes up every single yeah. year. Why? Because the Tory government are useless. They, they didn't. They didn't deliver. They didn't. Okay. But, but why? Okay. Like, if you want me to go into the whole political thing, okay? First of all, before I do anything political, I need to disclaim that I am a fully paid member of the Conservative Party. So I am a fully paid member, so I'm going to have a political slant on this, yep? Yeah? Okay. Basically, what happened was, everything was going well, we had COVID, and then we spent all the money. We blew all the money on COVID, yeah? And then everything went completely tits up. And then the Conservative Party got infiltrated by soft leftists, and that's why they need to come out of power. Is Rishi? Is he? Where do you put him on the spectrum? He shouldn't even be there, because I didn't vote him in. True. I didn't vote. He was. He was. He should have been. He should. How it works in our system? Yes. If you replace a leader, you don't have to have a general election. But yeah. as a member, we get to vote him in. We voted Liz Trust in. They didn't like her. They kicked her out to put Richie Sunak in the back door without voting for him. So as far as I'm concerned, he's unelected. Yeah. And that's what most people think. I wouldn't have minded if we'd have voted for him and, and, and he'd have won, even if I'd have voted against him, because that would have been democracy for you. But that wasn't democracy. So what do you say to people who say that Brexit was a disaster filled with false promises? Go and live in France. See, see how good the French have got it. See how good the Germans have got it. You think we've got a migration problem? You want to see how bad Germany have got it? Let's be fundamentally, brutally honest. Why has this happened, Angela Merkel? Yeah? She said, all oh, come. Why has that happened? Because they're trying to cleanse themselves from genocide back in the 1945. That's all Germany are trying to do. They're trying to make themselves better, feel better about the Second World War. So what they do is say, all oh, come, all oh, come, all oh, come, yeah? And then she buggers off, and suddenly there's migration everywhere. And what's happening? What's happening? When the migrants come over, it's always working age men. Isn't it? How are, com how are countries ever going to get themselves out of poverty yeah. if all the working age people come to other countries? And how come it's, it's a coming from a war torn country? It's only war torn for the uh, working class men and not women and children and people who are old. There's a question for you, isn't it? It's really so. So, economic migration. Yeah. You've got to stop it. But the problem is simple. Is you take it to France, but if you were the president of France, yeah, mm. and you've got uh, all these borders, there's no way you could stop the people coming to your country. So you're going to have millions of migrants, and then suddenly they want to go across the border to England. What are you going to get? Go on then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to do anything really? realistically, are they? He wants to get rid of them. But this all started with Angry and Merkel and the Schengen programme, which is in the part of the European Union. It's that simple. But being, being leaving Europe wasn't all about um, the migration problem. It's about national identity as well. Yeah. yeah. If, if, you know, I, whether I like or hate my government at the time, we voted the government in. That's called democracy. If we don't like them, we vote them out, yeah? How can I vote an unelected party in Brussels in? And they're telling me what to do. What type of democracy is that? What did Europe start as? Come on, you know your history. Really simple, yeah? It was trading partner. Yeah. That's all it was. You sell us stuff, you sell us stuff, we'll sell you frog flakes, okay? I've been very stereotypical here, yeah? But that was basically <laughs> it, wasn't it, yeah? It was that simple, yeah? So we could trade with each other. Then they started putting the bureaucratic nonsense on there. Oh, your bananas have got to be this bed, they've got to be this yellow, they've got to be that. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do the other. Sorry, we're British. We're not going to do what the French say. All the French know what to do is, sorry, Mr. Germany, we give up. <laughs> What else could the French do? And the Germany has been over 100 years to cleanse themselves anyway, so we don't have anything to do with them. You did not exaggerate when you said we should stop in here. Anything else you want me to put more to We'll get going, but what's your name again? Chris. Chris. Chris Higgins, YouTube virgin. YouTube virgin. The, the undisputed Blackpool daddy. The, the Blackpool daddy, OK? Oh, yeah. It really, my channel is more about just showing the real Blackpool. So that means showing the the the, 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 the not so good side of Blackpool, but also showing the very best of Blackpool as well. And that's the whole point of the channel. Well, it's great. It's great work. Everyone needs to go check out Stephen's page. The name once again. It's a walk on the wild side in Blackpool here in the UK. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the like button, and I'll see you soon. Sure.